Just finished a DIY CO2 injection. Uh, first, the reactor system down here at the bottom, and then a diffusion system. We'll get into that. So we have the two, I have two gallon jugs, drilled some holes in the top, stuck some, some uh, airline in there, used 100% waterproof silicone sealant to seal up all the joints here, here, and here. And then I ran them into, through these little shutoff valves for when I need to change these out. Every couple of weeks or so, I'm gonna alternate them. I can shut the valve off and the other one can continue producing co2 while i refill the other one and i don't lose anything out of the system any more than i need to so then i piped them into a t another shutoff valve goes into the bubble counter to kind of give me an idea of how fast the system is generating and it seems to be doing pretty good right now might be a little too much but we'll see then i have the check valve to reduce any backflow or eliminate any backflow from the tank. So each one of these gallon jugs here has two cups of sugar, one tablespoon of dry active yeast. Uh, I think I just used the stuff you get at the grocery store. Comes in a little uh, glass jar. Uh, so a tablespoon of yeast. Make sure you get the active stuff because the nutritional inactive yeast that you get from like GNC is dead. It's been pasteurized, does not work. Trust me, save your $12. <laughs> uh, on top of that, on the left side here, I added about a teaspoon of Osmocote, which is a plant fertilizer. It's fortified with essential nutrients. It contains some nitrogen, some phosphate, magnesium, sulfur, boron, copper, iron, manganese, some good stuff. So I'm hoping that this is gonna stimulate uh, the, the yeast fermentation. But this is an experiment. The whole thing's an experiment, so we'll see how this does. Initially, it does seem like the left side here has some a little bit more bubbles than the right side. But we'll see how that lasts after a week or so. We'll see if it, if it persists. So we go into the bubble counter. I ran the tube all the way down to the bottom here so you can clearly see the bubbles coming up. And then I ran another air line, just stubbed it down in there a little bit through the check valve. And then it runs all the way up to a power head. Right there. It's like 25 bucks at PetSmart. This guy, top fin for 30 gallons. Pushes 118 gallons per hour. Didn't need too much. Just uh, move that, move the water. So it's pulling the water. I grabbed some uh, some uh, nylon. I forget what that tubing is called. Uh, from Lowe's, 10 bucks for a, a 10 foot coil of it. Just needed a little bit extra there just to make sure I was staying below the water line. So it's pulling the water in there and then it injects the CO2. And then I used a gravel vacuum. You can see that right there. So I pulled, just pulled the end off here, the, the pump. And luckily enough, it fit right onto the outlet of the power head. And then I used some suction cups and some clamps there to hold it in place so the whole thing didn't try to lift up and float away. And then I drilled, the fish would get out of the way. There's some holes in there to let the water flow, kind of direct the water flow in a particular direction, three or four holes. And then I moved the gravel down at the base Pushed it all the way down as far as I could, secured it in place, and then uh, fired the system up. So it seems like I'm getting a pretty good flow right here out of the two gallons. And it's filled up about, I don't know, a fifth or a fourth or so of the way. All with CO2. 
and it looks like I'm getting pretty good diffusion. I can see these little bubbles. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light on, but I'm getting these little bubbles gravitating all the way over here in the corner. So we'll see how that how that works out. And the goal here is to just keep these plants alive. It seems like anything I put underneath the surface of the water just dies. It takes a couple of weeks, but it just dies. Except for the algae, of course, because I can never get rid of that. Working on that too, but. So I used to have plants. I have, uh, th this thing is hollow, and I have some substrate. I'll show you here. I have some substrate in the top of there, and I used to have plants growing out of there, and it looked like a, a tree base. But eventually, after a couple of weeks, they just turn yellow, wilt, and fall to bits. So I had to take it all out of there. So now we're going with the CO2 injection here to see uh, how that works. And I just want to keep these, keep this alive. My last water change, I added a little bit extra, so I do have some water or uh, some growth that is below the water line. I'm trying to keep it that way. And hopefully try to reclaim some of this on my turtle platform here that I made. So there is a turtle in here. She is hiding pretty good right now. Because she figured out that she could dig down below the substrate. And you cannot see her because she's completely submerged in the substrate right now. But I built this little platform out of PVC. It's a whole another project and uh, used uh, filter media uh, mechanical filter media from a pretty large filter um, and it's a, like a coarse foam material and I was able to actually embed the, the seeds into the filter and I got it to grow but as soon as I raise the water level up anything below the water dies so we will see how this works out and hopefully it does its job and doesn't cause any more unnecessary plant deaths. Wish me luck. Let me know if you got any questions. I'll do my best to respond and uh, you know, help you out. Thanks guys.